talking more about my great grandparents, I'll probably do some videos on them specifically because I was lucky enough to know my mom's grandparents. And on this side of my family here in Myron, uh, my grandfather's father, although the family's uh, relationship is a little different there. But my great grandparents, they were really neat. The only two stories I'm going to tell now is uh, about the first time I fell out of a tree. And I don't even know what kind of tree it was, but they had this really unique kind of tree in their front yard. I've never seen one with bark like that before, and I, I don't know what it was called or why it grew the way it grew, but it, it was, it's like no other tree I've ever seen. Very odd. I didn't think anything of it as a kid because it had always been there as far as I was concerned. Uh, but it was really easy to climb and, you know, low to the ground, and there was a lot of cool stuff you could do on it. And so I climbed it almost every day after school. And in kindergarten, after school, it had been raining all day, but it had quit and was just, just barely misting. And, you know, I'd went over there to hang out with my great-grandparents. I was like, I, I want to go play outside, you know, it's not raining anymore. But it was still slippery. And the thing I would always do on this tree is climb up to the first fork, which was about head high for me at five years old, and then climb out on one of the branches out onto the bow. And there was this branch that stuck out from it, I guess, maybe eight feet off the ground, but it stuck out directly parallel to the ground. So at a 90 degree angle, and you could hang on it just like a, a bar, you know, like a monkey bar. And so I was going to do that this day. And when I went to do it, it was very slippery. Uh, and I had noticed climbing up the tree that my shoes weren't sticking like they usually stuck. They were kind of sliding. So I was being pretty careful. But when I got out to this branch, it just went right through my fingers. And they had a bricks in their yard that they had made a pathway out of. It, and they look uh, really nice. And they're still there to this day. The ones close to the porch are not the ones further out. And then the hard roots of this tree directly under me. And this is the first time I ever got the wind knocked out of me. And if you've never had the wind knocked out of you, you can't take a breath. It, it's not it's not the pain that's in the way or the shock or anything. You physically can't breathe normally. But I fell from the tree and hit my chest. Like I landed flat on my chest. And I didn't want my great grandma to think I was hurt. So I popped up off the ground pretty quick and tried to like walk it off. And this happened. It, it feels like it happened in a split second. You know, it's like I'm grabbing onto the thing. I feel my hands when something slips out of your hand, you snappy feeling, <laughs> you know, in your palms. And I felt that. And then boom, I'm face down on the ground, and I'm thinking, oh, I've made a fool of myself in front of my grandmother. Pop up off the ground and start walking back to the porch. And it was at that moment I tried to take a breath in. It didn't seem to affect my grand great-grandmother much. She didn't move from her chair. It didn't even look like she flinched. But I could kind of tell there was worry underneath all that. But she did, didn't act like anything was wrong with it. Oh, kid fell out of the tree. Happens all the time, you know. And she started asking me, are you okay? As I'm stepping up onto the porch, going to sit down in the chair there. And I remember trying to tell her, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And I tried so hard to gasp. I, I Like, I couldn't make my chest inflate. You know, after a while, you go back to regular sinus breathing. And uh, she tried to tell me something like, oh, yeah, I've had the wind knocked out of me. I, you know, just, it's all right. You'll be fine. So I guess that was that was the first and last time I've ever fallen out of a tree. And that was the first time I've ever had the wind actually knocked out of me. But talking about my great-grandmother, it's going to be easier uh, to talk about her if I just call her Momo, because that's what we called her. As a matter of fact, that's what my mom and my aunt and uncle called her when they were kids. Uh, but she always drank mellow yellow colas. And th this is kind of like a, a foreshadowing event in my life. There's been a lot of these. I wasn't in school that day for some reason. It may have been during the summer or on a weekend or whatever. But I, I went over there early in the morning, and I remember saying to mom, you know, you should let me take my bionicles over there. But anyway, she let me take my bionicles over there. I had a fun day playing with them in the floor, watching cartoons on the TV. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Watching Ed, Ed, and Eddie, which my parents did not allow me to watch. My grandparents didn't allow me to watch, because they knew my parents didn't allow me to watch it. With uh, Momo, and she actually kind of got a kick out of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. And drinking these mellow yellow sodas. And I, I hadn't thought anything of it during the day, but, you know, evening rolls around, my mom comes to pick me up, ask, well, has he been good? Is he doing all right? I was packing up my things, and I heard her say this, but I didn't think anything of it at the time. I said, yeah, well, he's had a few uh, mellow yellows today. I drank two or three of them, but he's going to the bathroom a lot. And come to think of it, that day, yeah, about... <laughs> 
about once an hour, if not more, I'd been going to the bathroom to pee. And like we said, that didn't really mean anything to me at the time, but polyuria, uh, too frequent urination, is a, a sign of diabetes. Of course, so is polydipsia, too frequent drinking. But apparently I'd been doing both to keep up with the rate that I was at. And I never exhibited any symptoms of diabetes as far as I know until I was 16. But thinking about that memory makes me wonder if that was some early warning sign of me not having total control over my blood sugar, because I imagine my blood sugar's high, I'm thirsty, better have a mellow yellow. Of course, that makes you blood sugar go higher, makes you more thirsty, makes you need to pee more. But it was enough to where Momo was telling my mom, you know, he's been to the bathroom suspiciously too much. Like there may be something going on. I don't think anything ever came of it. Just that small bit of concern was expressed about it, and that seems to be the end of it. But looking back on it now, knowing what I know, it, it does make me wonder if that's what that was.